Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Rick Rowell. Alright, I am on the beginning of a very long period of time off of work right now. For those of you who followed me in the past, you know that a couple times a year, the company I work for shuts down the facility for 8 or 10 days and does major preventive maintenance and repairs and stuff on all of our equipment. Well, we entered that starting last pa uh, this past Saturday and I am now technically off of work until a week from Wednesday. So I got about 10 days off. Uh, I got to go in for a couple of meetings, but uh, uh, I've been knowing this has been coming and planning for this and uh, I, wanted, I had a handful of projects I wanted to do and today we're going to start one of them. Let me show you what we're going to be doing. This is the border between the front lawn and the uh, section of the uh, yard that has like a bunch of uh, shrubs and stuff like that in front of the house. Now, I've cleaned this up a little bit and I've put some new stuff in here over the years, but one of the problems I have is the lawn that I have here is called St. Augustine Lawn. And one of the, it's very, very well suited to uh, the harsh cold of the winter and the extreme heat of the summer. And even when it's damaged, it tends to recover pretty quickly because of its ability to send out these little runners, which will then take root and begin growing again in a different area. Uh, you can see a little bit of it going on here. Just this past weekend, I cleaned this whole section out, and you can see it's already bouncing back a little bit. The lawn is trying to reassert itself. And I want there to be kind of a very uh, uh, definite... Uh, barrier between where the lawn is and where the planter is. So what I want to do starting today is I want to put some weed uh, netting in here and then cover it up with some redwood bark or mulch or something like that that will hopefully keep these runners from uh, starting off in here uh, and filling this thing in because like I said I hit this this past weekend and it was just thick it was almost it was almost like the lawn here but in there and uh you know i'm having to, having to do that all the time and i basically just don't want to have to do it anymore so like i said i'm gonna put some uh, netting in there to prevent anything from growing from underneath and then top it with some mulch or some bark or something like that uh that will you know be nice looking in here and kind of fill this in a little bit better and make it look nice in here now, one of the things I do want to do before I get in there is I want to pull all these white stones out of here. This is limestone. Uh, we've talked about that a whole bunch. And there's a lot of it around here in Waco. Uh, because basically all of, uh, basically the center, center part of the United States used to be an inland sea. And so this is maybe, you know, a very shallow sea, maybe, you know, 50 feet deep. And uh, all these uh, creatures that lived in the water, when they died, their skeletons kind of coalesced into this limestone and basically just settled on the bottom. And uh, so now we got soil that's over that, and you dig down very far and you hit this limestone. Well, this is the area right here where they excavated when they tunneled under my house. And uh, they pulled a whole bunch of that limestone out. and. A lot of it just ended up being left here. And so I want to get that all out of here, uh, get rid of it or throw it somewhere else in the yard or whatever. And uh, so that I have kind of a smooth surface to work with. So that's also part of this job. All right, I've been through here. I uh, got all the, the leaf waste out of here. Uh, got, got rid of all the weeds and stuff that were kind of partially growing in here. I also kind of went behind this thing here and uh, kind of cleared everything away from the house so that it's not touching the house. Uh, when they've come in and done pest inspections, uh, which I get with my insurance once a year, they keep saying one of the things you want to do to keep uh, insects and the likes from getting into the house is just to make sure you don't have any of the bushes or plants that are growing around the house uh, touching the house because apparently that becomes a pathway in although I'm not really entirely sure why the uh, creatures can't crawl up the wall but that's what they say so that's what I've done so I got this pretty clear out here next thing I need to do is put the uh, netting in here now what the netting is it's it's something that's designed to keep uh, uh, plants from going through it allows moisture to go uh, in from the top but it won't allow 
it's so kind of dense uh, material that it will not allow uh, anything that's growing underneath to penetrate. And so you start with that and then you cover up with some bark and it should look pretty good. So this stuff just comes in a little roll and you just kind of roll it out and uh, pin it into place. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend some time shaping this and getting everything into position and uh, we'll see what happens. So this is the netting here I'm sort of talking about. Uh, it comes on a big, uh, about a three, four foot uh, wide roll. And you basically just lay it out on the ground where you want it. Uh, I'm using little nails to tack it down temporarily. You cut it to shape with your scissors and you just go all the way through here. And this will provide a very effective weed barrier, which will keep going, uh, keep the weeds out from coming out of the lawn. Now I'm probably not going to go all the way into the back there. I'm probably just going to do a, a sheet running this front perimeter because what's happening here is it's coming in from the lawn. So if I can pre prevent it from going in from the lawn, there's not going to be a lot happening in the back back there because it's not really good sunlight and nothing back there does really well that's sort of the point of uh, these big shrubs to kind of cover up the house and do some level of weed control so um, I've run out of the garden netting already I've got a little bit more left and I, I expected that might be part of the issue here that I have to go get some more of this this is actually stuff I just had from when I put the uh, uh, the vegetable garden in. Uh, you recall I had that little path that went between the two of the gardens and uh, I put some of this stuff down then I put some rocks down then I put the uh, pavers down and that's the uh, uh, the weed barrier I have there. It's done very well there and I expect it to do very well here. So I'm going to run over to Home Depot get some more of this. I'm probably going to also get some bags of the redwood bark that we're going to put in here to uh, cover this up and make this look uh, a lot prettier and uh, once we come back we'll finish that off and uh, show you what we got. All right I'm back from Home Depot I got some more of the uh, weed netting uh, now this is a slightly different stuff than what I had before this is almost the consistency of like a a trash bag but it's very very light and has tiny little holes in it so you can kind of see the difference here but it's all going to be buried under the uh, under the uh, mulch anyway so you won't even know like I said it's all designed to do sort of the same thing and I actually kind of like this other stuff it doesn't tear as easy it's a little bit more stretchy and so it's kind of really nice going around these corners you don't have to sit there and try and cut it to shape. You can just kind of wrap it up and underneath there and tack it underneath and you're good to go. So um, we got all the, the lining down now. I'm not going all the way to the back because uh, as I said before, the main issue here is the stuff coming in from the lawn. And if I can prevent, pre prevent it uh, for this short period of time uh, uh, from being able to find any soil then I'll be able to cut it off and you know get it trimmed back before it gets to the point where it reaches the back so next thing to do now is to put the uh, bark into place or the mulch into place get it spread around and I think this project's going to be about done and while I was at Home Depot getting the weed netting that we put down already, I also picked up about 10 bags of the cedar mulch. There's all sorts of different stuff you could do. There's hardwoods and stuff like that. But I really like the smell of the cedar and I think uh, this will make the yard look and smell very, very nice. So I got 10 bags. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, but I'd rather have uh, not enough and go back and get more than end up with a whole bunch more and then not know what to do with it. So we're going to start with this 10 bags. I think that will get us pretty close to uh, to uh, getting everything covered up the way I'm going to want it. And then maybe maybe we might get a couple more bags if we need to to uh, uh, fill in any of the blank spaces or low spots if I need to. All right, so a little time has passed. I got the mulch material in here and kind of as expected, um, I didn't have enough. Um, I made it most of the way here. You can see it looks really, really good in here. It smells really good, but 10 bags only got me to about here. So we're gonna have to go get probably another 10 bags. It's a little less, uh, you know, we got a little bit more than halfway done, but I'm figuring if I get 10 more bags, it'll fill this section in. Plus I can kind of fatten this up a little bit. I've been trying to kind of, you know, get everything nice and smooth all the way in the back there so that, uh, you know, we got just really good weed control here, but you never can have too much up here in the front. And uh, it'll settle a little bit as time goes by, but I think this looks a lot better than the bare dirt that was here. And uh, 
hopefully it'll do a good job of keeping the weeds under control too. Um, I'm guessing the, the shrubs around here will like this because uh, this stuff is going to leach all sorts of nutrients into the ground and you know plants love that. So um, I'm probably not going to get this video uh, finished up or get this project completed tonight but I'm going to wrap the video up right now anyway. You can kind of imagine what it'll look like uh, all the way down there. But uh, that is our project for today so I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.